paradise.com and today I have my really good friend and colleague Rebecca Kelso and can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Um, yeah sure so what I do is called the biofunctional method um, and basically TM. yeah TM <laughs> and um, basically I help people work on how they move so helping them move better um, helping them create a mind-body connection um, and it can be anything from just learning how to get up out of a chair without pain to more advanced things like working on you know their soccer mechanics whatever it is or so, making your butt look really good yeah or making your butt look amazing yeah. which yeah. is my specialty yeah <laughs> anyway <super dope. laughs> anyway and so she's in the wellness business too and yeah. helping people realize their full potential in some way so helping people feel unlimited but we're going to turn the tables today I'm going to be doing the interviewing questions. Yes, I get to be interviewed. Um, and this is something that, this is a topic that as much as I'm part of the health world, I don't actually understand. Yay. And so I asked Tracy about this in private, and um, we decided, or she decided, that this would be a good topic. Because if I don't understand it, chances are a lot of people don't. Yeah. So my big question, can I swear in this? <laughs> okay, you my can swear. My big question is, what the hell is organic and why is it important? Is hell really a swear word anymore? Yeah, so what's organic and why is it important? So that's a what really- What the bleep is organic <laughs> and why is it important? Yes, okay, so that's like a really big question. So yeah. I want Rebecca to check me here. So if I start rambling on and saying things that aren't relatable to an everyday person, I want her to really help corral me. I will. Because this I'll is a stop. huge topic and I'm really working on getting better at streamlining information so people can really grasp it and not get overwhelmed. So without getting into every detail of organic standards, which you could look up online, um, essentially the intention of organic is to keep molecules out of food that are not naturally found in living things. Okay, so we think of a synthetic molecule would be like a petroleum product, okay. like, which, which so many pesticides and fertilizers are synthetic ones. Synthetic just means made, like, right. I, I don't even want to say made, made. human made. Yeah. Yeah. Get a little feminist there. Um, so, so they're made, by, made in a chemistry lab. And so even though petroleum came from the earth, it came from nature, there's nothing outside of nature. It's not something that we have evolved you know, things from the core of the earth are not something we've evolved to have in our bodies. So our biology doesn't understand what the heck it is, what the bleep okay. it is when it gets in your system, okay. right? So the intention of organic is to not put molecules in our body that are gonna throw off our body systems and work against our biology instead of with our biology. Question. <laughs> um, so what are like the main sources for these foreign molecules? You want to call them that. Yeah, like it's one usually of the most gonna, common one. It's usually some form of a petroleum byproduct, almost always. In and, English. <laughs> okay, so thank you. In real so, person language. So if you, when they take those big machines and drill crude oil out of the ground, chemists will take that crude oil and turn it into gasoline, oil, plastics, so many different chemicals you can't even imagine artificial flavors, artificial colors, um, pesticides, fertilizers. Um, Agent Orange, I mean, so it just those goes on and most, on and on. Sorry, those yeah. are the most common ways that, that foreign substance gets into our food. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Through the fertilizers or And through. the pesticides, the additives, the preservatives, okay. the colors, artificial colors, artificial flavors, oh, all that stuff. Oh, those are petroleum based. They're petroleum based. Oh, yeah. Even okay. synthetic vitamins, like most mainstream cheap vitamins you get huh. are actually not made from real food not every case, but like a, a lot of them are actually made from petroleum or from taking a natural substance. You can even take corn or soy and you can modify it chemically to the point that it's nothing like where it started. So I like to use the metaphor of cocaine. So if you take the coca leaf, okay. <laughs> you take a coca leaf and people in the Andes chew it to help them tolerate high altitude and cold temperatures and things like that. And so, you know, it has an impact on the body. But if you take it and you process it chemically and turn it into cocaine, now you have something really scary that can be toxic to the body, but then you turn it to crack, it's even more toxic. So the more you take something out of its natural context and process it, then the more foreign it becomes to our biology and the more havoc it's gonna wreak in your system. Okay. Because our bodies are like trillions 
of chemical exchanges going on like every second. I mean, I, my brain can't even understand trillions. It's probably like a bigger number than that because we have yeah. trillions of cells, right? So every cell has so many chemical reactions going on. They're all working together. It's like this very delicate symphony trying to work perfectly together and it can handle some bumps. It can handle some challenges. It needs some stress and challenges to be strong. But if you challenge it too much, you start tearing it down faster than you're rebuilding it. And that's what illness is and it's also what aging is. We think aging is like time going by or the number of years, how old you are. It's really how much faster you're tearing down than you're able to rebuild. Mm -hmm. So you get to make a decision every time you use a product or eat something are you going to be tearing yourself down a little bit every time you eat or is everything about what you're putting in your mouth and doing with your body trying to build yourself and heal yourself and if you have a health problem you're really going to want to be more mindful of that yeah or if you don't want to get one in the first place that makes a lot of sense so pulling it back from the trillions of the cells, trillions of cells to like yeah. okay i'm in the supermarket uh -huh. right and i'm looking at two bunches of asparagus uh -huh. And one costs three ninety nine a pound, and one costs one ninety nine a pound. Uh -huh. My typical reaction would be, I'm going to buy the cheaper asparagus, but the three ninety nine a pound one is organic, right? Yeah. So and in Hawaii, what, it's like yeah, like seven or eight dollars. <laughs> True. Exactly. Yeah. I actually haven't bought asparagus in a while, but um, so what's going to make me like? Why would you? Why would yeah. I spend? How does how does that extra money spent on organic food translate into actually helping me? Is it? And yeah. I guess with that part yeah. two is okay. We get what not organic means. What does organic farming even mean? It just means yeah. they're not using the icky stuff. So they're not using the icky stuff. But okay. here's the trick: and able to not in order to be able to not use the icky stuff, you have to make the soil rich with microbes. Mm. You have to have really healthy plants with strong immune systems, which is actually good for our body because if the plant has a strong immune system and really good microbes, there's gonna be nutrients and there are gonna be phytochemicals, meaning plant-made chemicals, that are actually gonna support your immune system, they're gonna fight off cancer, they're gonna feed gut microbes, they're gonna help you build tissue, they're gonna help you repair damaged cells, they're basically gonna build you up and make you shine. So you're basically getting more bang for your buck. You're getting more bang for your buck. You're getting way more nutrients, plus then you get the added benefit that it's not tearing you down either. So right. it's both. And then, hmm. then there's what do these icky things do to us? Because I think a lot of times we think, well, it's just a little bit. I can't see it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's such a plant. tiny How amount. How can it affect me? Yeah, it's a tiny amount. And, and you know what? And I wash my produce, so that should just wash it right off. Well, what happens right. is these chemicals go through the cell membranes, and you can't get inside the cell membranes with washing. You can remove quite a bit washing, so I'm not going to say that's not useful okay. if you're eating conventional produce. It's better than not washing. But there are certain levels that, number one, it's going to be nutritionally inferior, but mm -hmm. also you can't get in the cell walls and get all the toxins out. You just can't. Oh, okay. So, what do these toxins do to you? Are you curious about that? Do I want to know? <laughs> yeah, I think it's good to Yes, I want to know. Okay. Tell me. So, what ends up happening is these molecules will actually do something called endocrine disruption. All that means is your body is made of these hormones, which are these signaling chemicals in your body that keeps everybody like, hey, we have this going on over here, and we need more of this over here, and less of this here. And mm -hmm. it's, it's basically your hormones connect all your body functions and keep them harmonized. They're communication okay. chemicals. So right. if they're, so we know about the reproductive ones, we know about thyroid, we know about adrenals, yeah. stress the hormones, yeah. things like that. But there are hormones, like we're continually discovering new ones and, and understanding they all have like 10 million jobs. Yeah, you know? and I mean, they, usually, they play a huge role they play in exercise huge role. and wellness. Fitness, exactly. All of it. So. Yeah, they affect your thoughts, they affect your yeah. immune system, they affect your organ function, they affect everything you can imagine that matters to you in your life, like how you think, how you feel, how you look. Hormones are important, folks. They're really important. <laughs> so there's something called endocrine disruption. When you put a molecule in your body, mm -hmm. even a tiny amount of it, like a microscopic tiny amount of this molecule goes into your body. Let's say it's like Roundup, or let's say it's some other kind of pesticide or fertilizer or a GMO bacteria that's okay. excreting some toxic pesticide that's been, you know, 
that it's been genetically programmed to have, that yeah. when these molecules get in your body, your body doesn't know what to do. So what often happens is they often look similar to like, let's say estrogen or some other hormone. Okay. So you're, they'll actually sit in a receptor site, but they won't get out. They'll just sit there and block up your receptor site for a long time. Versus a hormone. Yeah, a natural hormone will sit in the receptor site, communicate, move on, communicate, move I on, see. communicate, okay. move on. You don't want something just plugging up just your receptor sites. You don't okay. want it just sitting there. Okay. So it does that, and basically to make a very long story short, what ends up happening is it creates chaos in the communication system of your body, and you start mm -hmm. getting DNA damage, you, you end up with free radical damage, you end wow. up with, um, Basically, it leads to DNA damage and cancer. That's what it causes, and it causes hormone problems, so thyroid problems, reproductive problems, fertility issues, accelerated aging, diabetes, behavioral problems, cognitive problems. It will even damage the morphology of sperm and create poor quality semen. There's also studies showing that it will affect testicular development in adolescent boys. I mean, it affects women. It's linked to polycystic ovarian syndrome. Yeah. It's like, it goes on anything and Anything that on involves and hormones. Anything, which is everything. Yeah. So anything involving hormones is affected adversely by these chemicals. And there's a saying, the dose doesn't make the disease. Meaning, that was my next question. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Meet me too. Meaning, it. Just because it's a little tiny bit, it yeah. accumulates over time. So the damage accumulates over time. So let's say you just you ate a conventional tomato, like once every six months. Yeah. Your body's gonna take care of it. It's gonna be okay. If you have a healthy immune system. If you have a healthy health. immune system and everything. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Now certain people have a genetic predisposition to be they're really good detoxifiers. Okay. I didn't. I, one of the reasons I got into this business is because I happen to be born in a body and I've had my genetics tested and it turns out. I have some problems with that, so that's why I'm more sensitive to chemicals okay. because my body struggles to get the toxins out. So there is a genetic part in it, but that's you know, according to kind of a general consensus in the scientific community, that's about accounts for about 15 percent. Right. The other 85 percent is the decisions we make, the thoughts we have. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the moral of this story is when you put substances in your body that are not made of the same molecules as your body then it will start creating like this domino effect of havoc, of, of miscommunication. It's like a bad relationship, right? So let's say we have a relationship where every once in a while we get in a conflict or someone lies about something or whatever, but you're, most of the time you're in really good, trusting, yeah, loving dynamic, then you're probably gonna have a relationship that lasts a long time. But if you have a relationship where you're butting heads and, or there's no trust, like every day, then it's going to go sour pretty fast. It's not going to be something pleasant to live with. Well, that's right. how the body is. So if you think of a body as cultivating yeah. a loving, trusting relationship, that can help. That but, makes a lot of and sense. your body stores these chemicals in your adipose fat tissue, and then after that, it gets saturated, it starts storing it in organs and in the brain, and then you end up with things like MS, cognitive disorders, motor dysfunction. Yeah. So for your average person, mm -hmm. okay, let's say me, young, yeah. healthy, I'm not gonna, it's not like I'm gonna eat a conventional tomato, like you said, mm -hmm. and then the next day feel awful, right. right? It's This is something where you're looking at a lifetime, like short term, very low cost, mm -hmm. but long term, the cost is really high. Really high, like uh -huh. really, really high. And do you know what the number one cause of bankruptcy, I don't know if it's still number one, but it, it floats mm -hmm. around the top cause of bankruptcy what? in the country is medical bills. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. yeah. So. So That's it's kind of like save now, pay yeah, later, exactly. or do you want to pay now and save later? And you know, there's a saying that no one's going into bankruptcy over health food store bills. You know, and there are decisions we can make. It's what we value. So mm -hmm. I've I've worked with people of all socioeconomic backgrounds, and I'll walk into a home where people are like we can't afford food, but there's this big screen TV they just right. bought brand just, new from Best Buy or something. Yeah. So so it's it's how we choose to spend our our money and you can order online you can go to you know Costco and Sam's or more yeah there yeah. are ways farmers markets um, you know gardens all kinds of things there's so many ways if I feel like where there's a will there's a way where there's a yeah. willingness there's a way we just decide once I decided because when I decided to change my diet I was in probably the worst economic shape of my life and health wise I was really struggling so I had to make a decision am I worth it Right. So I think a lot of it comes down to perception of self-worth. Like, am I worth this? Do, am I worth spending extra money yeah. 
to get organic cauliflower. And knowing that you're making a long-term investment, which I have to say, I didn't, I never really conceptualized it like that because when you're there making a decision, you're thinking mm -hmm. short-term decision. Mm -hmm. Can this really be that bad for me? I'm eating a vegetable, you know, how yeah. bad could it be? Yeah. But um, I think, you know, kind of in summary, like organic, you're really giving yourself the benefit of not only having what the plant had, you know, yeah. but also not having all of the toxic junk mm -hmm. basically messing with your whole body. Exactly. That, did I get it right? You got okay, it right. Yes. And accelerating, <laughs> now, it, accelerating aging yeah. and disease too. And we can appeal to vanity because a yeah. lot of people don't want to age because they want to look good or whatever, but you really want to feel good. And most people, yeah. when you care about how you feel and you really invest in yourself and love yourself, then then you're just going to look good as a side effect. Right. But when you're just focused on the superficial and you're not getting to the root cause of things, then you don't really end up getting your the outcome you want. And it's very frustrating. And then yeah. we just decide, oh, to heck with it. I'm just going to go eat whatever because I'm not getting it. It's not working anyway. So right, right. It, right. So for those of you who live in an area where there aren't a lot of organics, then you know, still eat vegetables, still eat natural food the best you can, wash it off, things like that. You'll still get benefit from the nutrients in the food. So it's better than not eating vegetables or other foods. So, but really know that when you make a decision from fear, you're using the part of your brain that's very short-term thinking. And when you make a decision from love, that really requires looking at the big picture. So instead, catch yourself when you're in money fear and just really zoom out, look at the long, spectrum of your life and just really know that you deserve love over fear and you deserve life over suffering and sickness. So thank you it. so much. Thank you, Tracy. Yay. Thanks for finally explaining to me what the difference is. Yeah. She teaches in school. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.